guys um hi so i don't know how many of my followers actually like read my blog i know some of you do because you tell me and that makes me really happy but so if you don't know this past weekend i just went to invisible children's fourth estate which was a conference centered around empowering the youth of today to help end africa's longest running war so basically in a word it was epic <laughs> like and not like oh my god epic fail or like that hamburger was so epic no really this was the definition of the word epic like in the words of Jedediah Jenkins, I was a puddle of vomit on the floor the whole time. Anyways, so I feel like I'm gonna miss something while I'm talking because just so much happened in so little time. And so they gave us these really cool little notebooks. And as you can see, I took a million notes, like I took complete advantage of it. And so on the plane ride home from San Diego, I wrote a few pages about my experience and I'm just gonna read that you don't have to watch by any means like I'm not expecting any of you to this is more for me but if you do watch I love you so anyways here we go currently on my way home from San Diego sitting in this airplane the gravity of what I just went through is finally starting to hit me and it's hitting me like a truck I just spent four days with 700 people as insane, rebellious, and most importantly, as passionate as I am about finding justice for Central Africa. This is a cause largely ignored by our extremely powerful government and the spheres of influence in our nation and other nations. Until now, that's all changing. I'm not sure I'm ever going to completely comprehend how monumental what I just experienced was. A band of innovative and creative youth are closer to ending Africa's longest running war than anyone else has ever come. It's largely due to the remarkable leadership of the three founders of IC, Jason, Bobby, and Laren, and their staff. Their gift for storytelling has captivated and motivated an entire generation. I mean, it's crazy. It's so insane to think that radio towers and rehab centers are being built because some kids decided, hey, let's have a bake sale and then we'll have a dance party. Like, and a bill was passed because a bunch of crazy hipsters stormed Capitol Hill. I mean, what is that? I'm so in awe of the world that we live in because for all of the negativity constantly surrounding us, it just seems like there's a beautiful outcome on the horizon for those who are willing to search for it. Now, on to the specifics of this weekend. It was epic. It was just jam-packed with knowledge and sessions and speakers and inspiration and all that. The energy like vibrated. As soon as you stepped into the theater, you couldn't escape it. Everyone was hanging on to every single word uttered. I hung on to every syllable, gesture, and expression. I mean, yeah, these were giants standing before me sharing their experiences and their intelligence. John Prendergast, Jolie Ocott, Sean Stevenson, Jeremy Rifkin, Gary Hagen, Sheriff Poven, it just, Joel, Jolie Ocott, I don't know if I already said that, but yeah, it was amazing. And one of the things that all of these powerful people had in common, besides their thirst for freedom and human rights and dignity and empowerment, they were all honored to be in our presence. Like, I was like, what? Like, how is that? I'm just 18. I'm hoping I can do half of the things you've done in your life. Like, I'm here to learn from you. But no, they kept reiterating how honored they were to be with us. And when Jeremy Rifkin, a man whose entire theory is based on the downfall of our species, says, where his only hope, it just doesn't get any more unreal than that. It doesn't. One man truly spoke to me though, and that was Jason Russell. He has the title Dream Evangelist, and that is exactly what he is. Now, I've had the pleasure of seeing him before, but this was completely different, and I feel like I was completely more mature this time, and it just meant so much more. So, 
His speech he shared with us was about a very difficult time in his life, a very painful, despairing time, and how his faith helped him through that. And before I say anything else, like, just know I see is not in any way religiously affiliated. So I feel like that was a big step for him to share his faith without hesitation, like, because that's something that can so quickly be controversial, but that didn't stop Jason. So as he spoke about how his faith helped him through hard times and about where he is now in his life, I realized I really don't have a faith. For all my years of Catholic schooling and Sunday masses, it's all just kind of gone in one ear and out the other. Like, I feel no connection to any higher power. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized maybe that explained my past failures. And maybe if I started a relationship, it would bring me future successes. So I know that I now have to start forging and maintaining a relationship with the big man upstairs, whoever that may be. I got the opportunity to share this with Jason and he received it in the best possible way. I felt like he truly understood everything I had to say and he actually believes in me, which is just amazing. I can't tell you how amazing that feels. <sighs> he really knew where I was coming from. So now I'm officially starting my journey as not just a believer, but a follower. The rest of the conference was equally inspirational. I got to sit, on, sit in on sessions led by Adam Fink, the programs director at IC. So I learned so much more about international development, which is what I've always been interested in. And it really was the most interesting stuff that he was saying, and I'm completely sure this is my calling, if I wasn't before. And I only want to help rebuild lives over in Central Africa, but I want to experience these beautiful people. Like, I want, I want to soak in their wisdom. These are communities of people who have every reason to be bitter and hateful and resentful but their optimism is refreshing their liveliness just pours out of their souls it resonates in my mind every time i watch a piece of ic media like what do i ever have to complain about in my life if these souls have witnessed unthinkable atrocities and still stand tall and proud i can learn so much from them as they've already taught me a million things and I've never even met them. So I'm back in Maryland in a few days. I'll be back in Massachusetts, armed with a renewed passion for a groundbreaking cause. I have spent too much of my life passive. It's time to become active. Time slips away and there's no way we can get it back. And in the end, we'll not be judged for what we thought or what we said but how we acted an army of children in africa is being saved by an army of children abroad like there will always be setbacks and hurdles but how we handle that adversity is the point it may come in the face of a skeptical it may come in the form of a skeptical face or like lack of funds or an apathetic crowd but we have to realize we've come too far to turn back. I can see the end and the end looks like gold.